Why well, don't take a look at housing stocks here because they would be uh, hit first and usually are hit first when interest rates start rising. The thinking going that obviously if you're a home builder, the last thing you want to see is the price of those homes and people affording mortgages to start getting prohibitive. And then they are well into bear market territory. In other words, off 20 percent or so from their from their high levels. And that is routinely the case in virtually uh, every major uh, player's uh, case here. Uh, is that overstated, overdone? Uh, and do we have still more hurt to come when it comes to housing, when it comes to housing stocks, when it comes to housing itself as a sector and a vibrant part of our economy? Uh, to Own America founder and CEO Greg Rand and Deke Digital Chairman Dave Maynard. Uh, Dave, what do you think? Uh, it's that creates a big, big drag, as you know, Neil, when those mortgage payments start going up. And, and I think that it does have the trajectory to change what has been a very rosy situation. And then don't forget that home builders also typically have big land inventories that they're paying uh, carrying costs for. So that also turns out to be a, a big drag and a big problem and, and, and harms future land purchases. So it's not a good cycle when rates start rising meaningfully. Greg, are you worried about the environment ever? Just for housing, I know markets go up and down and they can gyrate wildly, but for housing itself, I mean, this was going on with these issues long before any of this stuff. Right, yeah, well, rates going up to 5%, you know I'm not concerned about that. I, the behavioral uh, pattern, the decision to buy a home is driven by things that have nothing to do with mortgage rates for most people. Which house to buy, if the house you wanted to buy is out of reach now because the rates went up, well then you buy a less expensive house. But the demand drivers, consumer confidence, um, confidence in their job, overall good feeling about the economy, the desire to own real estate. Investors are seeing a, a bump um, with the activity happening right now because most investors are still working with a lot of cash or debt that they got behind the curtain, not on the specific property they're buying, but on the fund that they're working with. So when the overall economy takes a, a, a blip like this, especially with the stock market taking a hit, it does tend to drive so, some people towards real estate because tangible investments become more attractive. Um, you know, the, the flip side of that argument, Dave, you got to get in while the getting's good. Now, the president making very clear he's frustrated with the Federal Reserve. I don't know if that's necessarily going to move uh, Jerome Powell to, to move any slower or faster on interest rates. I think he'll try to keep a distance from that. But it, it's clear that interest rates continue going up, right? It would seem that way. And I think, as David Stockman was saying before, there's lots of good reasons why that should continue to happen. And, and while I think it's true that potential home buyers just move their segment according to the numbers, let's remember none of those decisions are made in a vacuum. And look, I'm not sure I agree with Mr. Stockman that the sky is falling or about to fall. But having said that, there's no way to divorce the barometer that are the markets is not divorced from the whole economy. So how those employees and how those potential home buyers feel about the economy and their job and their security is were this thing to continue or were we to follow that downward path it's it, it's all rather tightly linked um can you have housing greg going one way the market going another i mean we we know of many instances 87 was an example where that crash uh about half a year to a year later did affect real estate what what do you think if the, if the market crashing causes the overall economy to lose steam and consumer confidence to go down, well then sure. Um, housing is tied more directly to population growth, raw population growth. It's the most fundamental asset class that we have. You know, if people live here, they want to stay here, they want to come here, population growth, people want to live indoors, right? So housing in particular, residential real estate, uh, tracks to population growth and general consumer confidence. If folks get fearful, uh, what happened last time around, six, eight years ago, nine years ago, is that investors came in because they had long-term view uh, that said that the housing market was going to come back, and so they piled capital in. We actually found the floor in 2011, not because of home buyers, but because of investors crowding into the space. Um, and so the balance of whether a, a property is going to be a rental, a home, is going to be a rental or going to be owner-occupied is kind of that fork in the road that... If the economy is going well, home ownership drives up. If the economy goes the other, other direction, rentership drives up and then investor activity kicks up. So it's kind of a, it hedges against itself a little bit. So Dave, by that, if, if jobs are still uh, strong and job growth is still very respectable, that's probably an understatement, that could be the tonic here. 
Yeah, look, I, I, as I said, I am not feeling like wildly economically bearish. It's two separate questions. Right. What's going on with the economy and the markets is one thing. I think it's a little bit of whistling past the graveyard to say it's self-correcting. Like, guess what? If we go into an economic tailspin, the housing guys are going to get whooped in the behind in a, in a big, bad way. That's just reality. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you all very, very much.